12. The 6 o'clock news starts right now. When Janine Jones, known as the killer nurse, was sentenced to life in prison last week, it ended a tragic drama that spanned nearly four decades. One that began with her 1984 conviction for killing a Kerrville infant and ended with a plea agreement in the 1981 death of another baby. Our Paul Venema with a look back at this tragic case in what we call the backstory. Janine Jones had been suspected in as many as 40 infant deaths of children under her care at area hospitals in the early 80s. Last week's guilty plea in one of those cases resulted in a life sentence. This has been one of the most complex and challenging cases um, just due to the sheer volume of information, the age of the case, but it is also a great lesson in perseverance. Work that was done by District Attorney Joe Gonzalez's staff that began after they took over when Gonzalez defeated Nicholas LaHood. It was bittersweet. We wanted to finish it out, but the fact that it was finished out to some degree was the victory for us. LaHood said he and Prosecutor Jason Goss had invested nearly two years examining cases in which babies had died under Jones' care. We looked at every single baby we could and tried to get any indictment that we felt we could prove beyond a reasonable doubt at trial. Politics and personalities aside, LaHood said they had just one objective. Regardless of how we would have ultimately handled the case in the end, the fact that she pled to life was a victory for the families. Families, too, the priority for prosecutors. One word, they said, described Jones. For her to decide on her watch who lived and who died is nothing short of evil. Jones will stay here for now, awaiting transfer back to the women's prison in Gatesville, where in all likelihood she'll spend the remainder of her life. Paul Venom, a case at 12 News. Also in court today, jury selection beginning in the case of the alleged medical center rapist. Anton Harris is accused of terrorizing the medical center area for about two years, committing five sexual assaults. Last August, Harris pleaded guilty to five counts of sexual assault as part of a plea deal. But Judge Frank Castro rejected that deal, instead sending the case on to trial. Harris is now facing the possibility of life in prison on each charge instead of the 40-year sentence that he would have received in that plea agreement. A man arrested after police say he attacked someone, then stole their phone. It happened on the northwest side. Robbie Cotty, charged with aggravated robbery. Police say on Sunday they were called to investigate the robbery in the 400 block of Vance Jackson. They tell us the victim was getting his things, trying to leave an apartment when he was confronted by the suspect. Police say Cotty hit the victim in the face with a gun, took his cell phone. The victim able to get away and call police. A homeless encampment behind a senior living complex on the city's northeast side is not only an eyesore for some, but a major safety concern for people who live there. They're hoping the city will clean things up. Today, our cameras captured things like dirty mattresses and broken bicycles in an area behind the legacy on O'Connor Road apartments. We also saw people who appeared to be living in tents. Neighbors from the apartment complex say pe people often loiter and sleep in their common areas and sometimes they've become violent. I personally have had them fight right outside my window with machetes and and uh, guns. Not too long ago, they were riding their bikes through here and this one guy was coming with his hand, his hand off his handlebars twirling a machete. The apartment complex management has not responded to our request for comment, but District 10 City Councilman Clayton Perry has. Perry says he plans to have the camp dismantled and get the homeless people the help that they need. You can read his full statement on our website right now at ksat.com. It was just six months ago that cyber criminals attacked local government agencies in 23 Texas cities. The statewide attack brought the Lone Star State front and center in the discussion about cyber crime. Courtney Friedman spoke with the IT director with the city of San Antonio and explains why municipalities are a main target and what the city's doing to defend its information. 
City and county governments a gold mine for cyber scammers. We have very complex systems, broad responsibilities here in San Antonio, over 40 departments of city services, almost 13,000 employees. Craig Hopkins and is the city of San Antonio's work, IT director and chief well, information right? so officer and says he constantly prioritizes or... cybersecurity and trains employees monthly. Up to 95% of the incidents we have are usually driven by human error. Hopkins teaches city employees about the main types of cyber attacks. Phishing is the most common. Phishing basically says, I want you to click on a link and I want you to give up some information that you may not have normally give. When that happens, I can take over one account and then I can then impersonate you inside of your organization and move horizontally. Then there's a concept called whaling. Think of it as big fish. So people of certain title, elected officials, city manager, the chief financial officer, really targeting them because if you can impersonate them, then you can create influence over other people. And that's where financial scams tend to come out. Hopkins also warns about physical security. People looking over your shoulder at confidential information, calling your phone, pretending to be someone else, or piggybacking into facilities when you use an access card. And this goes for all types of businesses. News agencies are also a really big target for these criminals. So here's a defense mechanism we use here at KSAT. If I get a suspicious email, I can click this button that says report fish and that will go out to our whole company to prevent future attacks. Hopkins says this is a very common and a great way to prevent those future attacks. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. The impeachment trial of President Donald Trump starting in earnest today. The Senate floor already a contentious battleground as the basic rules for the trial are debated. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell originally proposing each side have 24 hours over two days to make their opening statements, meaning senators could potentially sit for four 12 hour sessions running well past midnight. But in a last minute change, it was expanded to 24 hours over three days, matching the timeline for the Clinton impeachment. And another change, the evidence from the House now automatically admitted into the record. Then there would be up to 16 hours of questioning from senators before a vote to consider new witnesses. If I said, judge, my case is overwhelming, but I'm not ready to go yet. I need more evidence before I can make my case. I would get thrown out in two seconds. And that's exactly what should happen here. The trial should be fair to the House, which has been wrongly deprived of evidence by a president who wishes con to conceal it. It should be fair to the president, who will not benefit from an acquittal or dismissal if the trial is not viewed as fair. The debate over the rules could last hours, with the minority leader introducing changes along the way, including ones which would be to subpoena the White House. Time saver traffic right now. Let's go to I-10 and Frio as I-10 winds towards downtown. Usually a backup in this area, and there's certainly one today, but not a lot of traffic trouble spots to tell you about at this hour. Meantime, a look outside with live cam 60 degrees out there. We saw some nice sunshine out there today, Adam, but we got some changes coming our way. Yeah, we had the sunshine. Now the clouds have really rolled into town. I know the sun just set, but we've had these clouds for now just a few hours as they've been increasing through the afternoon and into the early evening. Still 60 degrees out there. Some dry air though in place, a dew point of 37. Gradually, the air is going to saturate. That temperature and dew point will meet up and we'll have some areas of rain. Drops hitting the ground later on tonight. I think especially closer to midnight and even a little thereafter here in San Antonio. Temperatures falling through the 50s. We'll talk more about this rain that's coming, how soggy it'll be tomorrow, and how much rain we could get coming right up. All right, thanks, Adam. Hundreds of FFA and 4-H students are hoping their hard work will pay off this week at the 47th annual Walter Gerlach Livestock Show. Yeah, the students have been preparing their animals for their turn in the show ring, and the payoff could mean big money for scholarships. As Stephanie Cerner reports, students say the program has already been a valuable learning experience. Today is goat judging day. And these students with O'Connor's FFA program say it didn't take them long to learn that when it comes to showing goats, they will always have their work cut out for them. He's very like spoiled. 
he likes to cuddle and he likes eating a lot. <laughs> They'll eat anything. Ag science teacher Brian Hawkins says for the students to get to this point, it's a lot of hard work, starting from learning how to take care of their animals. It takes a lot of practice, a lot of patience with, you know, the students have to have a lot of patience with their animal, uh, constantly working with them. Uh, we encourage those students to work, you know, multiple hours a day with those animals to try to train them to walk with them, uh, as well as, of course, showing. Hawkins says the students learn a lot about responsibility, and many of them go into the medical field or engineering field. But I've enjoyed the challenge. This stock show program has given me that chance to better myself by pushing myself and doing different things that I've, I've never been able to have the opportunity to do. I've always wanted to work in the animal industry. I want to become a zoologist, and I... I thought that this program would be a great opportunity for me to learn the basics of working with animals and taking care of them. And many students, like Brittany Haby, who won Grand Champion last year, have been awarded money for scholarships. And it's just such an incredible opportunity to just know that all of that hard work paid off and to know that I did that. I worked so hard and this is, I got that gift. It was amazing. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. Northside ISD Magnet School getting a $4.5 million upgrade. Health Careers High School first opened in 1984. It will soon feature new medical equipment and a mock hospital room. The renovation project funded with savings from a 2014 school bond. The goal is to attract more students to the program. They have about 850 um, students now, give or take, and um, we are looking to expand that by about 50 students per grade level in the next four years. The school offers several programs, including pharmacy technician and medical assistance. The renovation is expected to begin in May. Crews hope to complete the project by the end of the year. Several presidential candidates are being pulled from the campaign trail as the Senate impeachment trial of President Trump gets underway. Coming up, what to expect from those candidates in the weeks ahead. And the road to recovery following an abdominal surgery can be a long one. After the break, a way to better manage pain and quickly get back on your feet. I'm Dylan Collier. Coming up on the Night Beat, it's a land battle pitting a San Antonio family against the public entity in charge of constructing the Mission Reach. The dispute closing in on three quarters of a million dollars. Recovering from abdominal surgery is tough. It takes the average person at least six weeks to get back to work, and that's when the risk of opioid abuse skyrockets. Ursula Perry reports on a new way to manage pain and get patients back to work much faster. Steve Milton loves doting on his garden and his dog, but chronic searing pain in his digestive tract almost kept him from doing either one. I had a real difficult five months prior to my operation. Three ER visits, one hospitalization, never ending infections. Doctors put him on antibiotics for diverticulitis. They tried a variety of drugs. Um, actually had bad reactions to one of the drugs and was hospitalized. Surgery was next with a new way to handle Milton's pain after. It prevents patients from developing post-operative pain. It accelerates their recovery so they're in bed less and getting less post-operative complications. A combination of pain blockers and local anesthetics are placed right next to the incision before surgery and they last up to three days after the operation, which reduces the need for opioids. Opioids were associated with problems with delayed bowel function. The new approach cut the days in the hospital by more than half, and the use of morphine by 80%. They feel better, they're happier, and they have less pain. Milton was up and walking around four hours after his surgery. He went home two days later and was back at work Monday, only taking Tylenol. I'm a new man from... Uh, what was a real potential life-threatening situation. This is a very serious problem because nearly 30% of patients who are prescribed opioids misuse them. This particular protocol is being recommended for all abdominal surgeries and it's being expanded to include those who are having breast surgery. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. All right, so gray day. <laughs> not like the weekend, not like yesterday, not like parts of the weekend. Today was just, you know, gray. We woke up to some sunshine, but then, yeah, the gray clouds moved in. We had a good variety of clouds to the sky. That's what I like about days like today. When you get that transition, you see many layers to the clouds. <laughs> and, of course, clouds are classified in layers. So you see a silver altitude. lining. 
literally in the clouds. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It's beautiful. I'm sure other people noticed the lovely sky out there, too. Now it's just great. We just have the dark clouds in place, the low clouds, and they'll lead to some areas of rain just, I think, later on tonight, so within hours. All right, let's start with a look at our headlines. There's that cloud deck. You can see it very clearly. Rain develops tonight for San Antonio, I think, around and especially a little after midnight. Then a very wet morning commute, so give yourself some extra time tomorrow morning. Hey, the sun returns by Thursday, though. It was an average day today. We started at 40, made it to 64 for the high temperature here in San Antonio. So pretty much right on par. Right now, we're right at 60 degrees. Not just here, but you go west along Highway 90, Hondo, Uvalde at 60, and one degree cooler in Del Rio. New Braunfels, meanwhile, 58, and low to mid 50s in the Hill Country. No big changes across the state, and this is important because the rain that's coming tomorrow isn't part of a big, strong cold front that's barreling southward. It's actually mainly just upper level support that we have with this upper level disturbance that's moving into New Mexico. Out ahead of it, good plume of moisture, but not only that, some good energy as well. And that's why we're already seeing rainfall from the Panhandle all the way through West Texas. Good soaking rainfall for, for folks. and. No real threat of severe weather. That's a nice thing with this event. Good moisture is coming in. You can see that cloud plume coming off the Pacific. That's some good deep moisture that's going to help us out in terms of rain showers, not just for us, but other parts of the state as well. And we could all use the rainfall considering a good chunk of Texas is in drought, especially here in South Texas. That dark red indicates the extreme drought that's currently in place. So let's talk about this. Looking at the current radar, nothing locally right now. Our evening looks just fine for outdoor activities and dry. But you get up into the hill country and we're starting to see some radar returns, especially in Kerr County, moving into Gillespie County. I do suspect that some of this is evaporating before it hits the ground. Just because the air is still fairly dry, we're still saturating. So some of the first little colors that you see on the radar screen tonight, if you're checking your KSAT app, maybe evaporating before it hits the ground and then a little bit thereafter the rain moves in. Here's our timing. I like this particular computer model. 1 a.m. The rain definitely in the hill country, but starting to fill in around Bear County, San Antonio and the Highway 90 corridor. Then we get to the morning commute areas of rain moving through South Texas and it's looking like a soggy and damp morning commute even midday at the noon hour. Pretty damp out there still some ongoing showers, some light, some moderate. Then we get into the evening commute tomorrow and the rain should start to push east of town at that time. We'll just be left over with some road spray, some uh, ponding of water on the roads and the low clouds. But you know, the sun returns as we get into Thursday. So here's the planner for tomorrow. Start the day at 50 into the afternoon. We'll make it to 60 degrees. I think the majority of our rain will be the first half of the day tomorrow through about maybe 2 3 p.m. And then those rain chances really taper off later into the afternoon and especially by sunset. As for rainfall accumulations closer to the Rio Grande, we're thinking lesser amounts, maybe a tenth of an inch, possibly a quarter of an inch. Then you get locally Bear County and points eastward, even up the I 35 corridor, the potential of maybe three quarters of an inch here and there. So have your rain gauges ready and of course, by tomorrow evening, snap the photos of how much rain you got and share it with us on our KSAC Connect app. All right, as we get into Thursday, the sun returns in a beautiful day. Everything's going to green up nicely near 70. Same story Friday and a slight chance of some showers developing this weekend, but comfortable in the 60s. Yeah, temperatures not too bad. Mm -mm. Thanks, Adam. All right, a much heralded rookie making his debut. Right, we haven't seen him at all during the regular season because he got injured in the preseason. Now Zion Williamson makes his regular season debut against the Spurs tomorrow night, and the Pelican admits he's a little nervous. All right, when we come back, more about his debut and why the Chiefs are the early favorites for Super Bowl 54. Our San Antonio Spurs have pulled it within a half game of the eighth and final playoff spot in the Western Conference by opening the second half of the NBA season with a big road win against the Phoenix Suns. But it did not come easy. Bryn Forbes led the charge early by scoring 21 of his 24 points in the first half, including a franchise record seven three-pointers, including six for six in the second quarter. That would put the Spurs up at the half 66-51. The Spurs would expand their lead to as many as 20 in the third quarter, thanks to Derek White's season high of 25. But that lead would be squandered in part by Devin Booker's incredible 37 points.
point night. They'll tie the game up at 108 all. The Suns would actually take the lead. Ricky Rubio's basket just under three minutes left, 113 to 111, the first lead of the game for them. But Bryn Forbes scored his only basket of the second half with his eight three pointer with two and a half minutes left. Spurs would hold on for the win, 120 to 118. DeMar's going to get a lot of attention. Um, so whenever he gives the ball up and uh, I got to tag, I got to be confident. And uh, they tell me all the time to be aggressive him in L.A. So um, I got to just be aggressive and make the right play. But on the road, it's just us out here. I mean, it got pretty loud in here when they won that run. But uh, we stuck together, uh, stayed as a unit. And uh, that's what we got to do here on the road. It's, it's us against everybody else in the building. And it's right at 15 and nothing run. In fact, before the Spurs host the Pelicans, they had to face the Red Hot Grizzlies in Memphis last night. The same Grizzlies who were on a seven-game win streak. Drew Holiday had missed the last seven games for the Pelicans due to an elbow injury. Celebrated his return to the court by scoring 36 points, included seven to ten from three-point range. Part of the Pelicans' franchise record-breaking 21 three-pointers in the 126-116 victory. Next up, the Spurs tomorrow night to mark the first regular season game for number one draft pick Zion Williamson, who has missed the first half of the season with a knee injury. Here's that match in fact, they moved the tip time to later for national broadcast at 8.30 p.m. Baylor fans got to meet their new head football coach, Dave Aranda, on the court last night as the Bears hosted Oklahoma in a Big 12 showdown just hours after being named the number one team in the nation, the latest Associated Press college basketball poll. And the Bears went out and defended their number one ranking by holding off upset-minded Sooners. Masio Teague scored 16 points and came up with a key steal and breakaway basket to help push the Bears out to a 53-46 lead. But the Sooners countered with a three-pointer from Austin Reeves to cut the Baylor lead to 2 59-57, but that's as close as they could get as the Bears pull off the 61-57 win and are now 6-0 in conference play. Seems like guys are just, the general feel is they know it's nice because, you know, I think it's just something that we can just say, like, hey, at one point we were on the number one team in the country. But, I mean, outside of that, I mean, guys have bigger goals. Their focus are set elsewhere. So, we kind of just look at it and say, you know, that was nice. You know, thank God for it, and then just move forward. All right, Baylor now takes their number one ranking out for a little road test when they face Florida on Saturday night. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Kansas City Chiefs have ended a 50-year drought with a trip to Super Bowl 54 one week from this Sunday in Miami, 50 years after winning Super Bowl IV way back in 1969. And they earned that trip by holding off the surprise team in the NFL postseason, the Tennessee Titans, this past Sunday, 35-24, and now the early one-point favors to beat the 49ers to win the Lombardi Trophy. That shows you what kind of game we're expecting. One reason why the Chiefs are averaging 43 points in the postseason behind quarterback Patrick Mahomes, who has already thrown eight touchdowns. These kids are coming out of college now that offensively are throwing the ball like crazy. And, and um, so we're, we're utilizing that from whatever formations uh, might be familiar with them or to them. And, um, you know, just try to give them an opportunity. And you know where Mahomes played his college ball? That would be Texas Tech. Indeed. Mm -hmm. I'm happy for the city of Kansas City. I didn't realize it had been that, that long. long. Indeed. 1970. Exactly. Wow. Thanks, Greg. Still ahead at 6.30, a Phoenix mother arrested, accused of harming her three young children, eventually leading to their deaths. What police have uncovered so far. And a fire at a Staten Island home spreads quickly, burning through at least eight other homes. We'll hear from a witness who rescued his brother from the flames. As the impeachment trial starts to unfold, the 2020 presidential race rolls on. Several candidates have been pulled off the campaign trail back to Washington. And now Hillary Clinton has some harsh words for Senator Bernie Sanders. ABC's Trevor Alt with the latest. With less than two weeks until the first votes of the 2020 presidential race are cast, many of the top Democrats are on a blitz in Iowa. Iowa, I think you're going to make me the next president of the United States. The latest poll from Focus on Rural America showing former Vice President Joe Biden leading the crowded field with 24 percent support. You know, you all uh, have the keys to the kingdom here in Iowa. <laughs> With their time on the Iowa Trail dwindling, several of the top candidates have been pulled back to Washington. Senators Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, Amy Klobuchar, and Michael Bennett, all serving as jurors in the president's impeachment trial. We have a great group of volunteers in Iowa, New Hampshire, knocking on doors in 
very, very cold weather. And, uh, we're going to be dependent on that. I have to do my constitutional responsibility. And as the race unfolds, some explosive new criticism coming from the previous Democratic nominee, Hillary Clinton, the Hollywood reporter, previewing extensive comments she made about Senator Bernie Sanders in an upcoming Hulu documentary, saying nobody likes him, nobody wants to work with him, he got nothing done, and hesitating to say if she'd endorse him if he wins the nomination. Secretary Clinton is entitled to uh, you know, her point of view. Uh, my job today is to focus on the impeachment trial. Secretary Clinton's spokesperson has addressed her comments about Senator Sanders, saying we all need to work our heart out for the nominee, whoever that is, and Secretary Clinton won't be an exception. Trevor Ault, ABC News, New York. Around America, police in Phoenix, Arizona, investigating the deaths of three young children after they were found inside a home last night. Police officers went out to the house after receiving a call from a relative. When they arrived, the kids were in a living room area just off the front door and unresponsive. CPR given, but unsuccessful. Then this morning, they announced they've made an arrest in the case. So this morning, we have learned that through the investigation, uh, the 22-year-old mother has admitted to harming her three children, uh, which caused their um, demise. Uh, as you can remember, we they were pronounced uh, deceased last night. Um, she will be booked on three counts of first-degree murder. Police say the children lived at the home with their parents and two other adults. The mother's identity has not yet been released. Meantime, two children in critical condition after a shooting in Memphis, Tennessee. Police say the shooting happened at a home last night. One victim, a boy, and the other is a girl. They were taken to a hospital where their family says they are recovering. The shooting marked the second time in two days where a child was the victim of gunfire in Memphis. A 10-year-old boy was shot and killed Sunday night while playing in his front yard. It's scary moments for some University of Alabama students during their trip back from New Orleans on Sunday. Their charter bus caught fire on the highway. First responders said the bus driver ran over an object in the road that caused the bus to ignite. The driver immediately pulled over, was able to evacuate the students before the bus became fully engulfed. Luckily, no one injured. On Staten Island in New York, hundreds of firefighters fought some fast moving flames, which started in one house and spread to at least seven others. Authorities say that 19 people, and that includes 18 firefighters, suffered minor injuries. The four alarm fire was first reported yesterday afternoon and within 30 minutes, a fifth alarm had been sounded. The fire department says wood construction in the attics allowed that fire to spread quickly through the roof. One man ran back inside his burning home to save his brother who was asleep. And I was in the shower and whatnot, relaxing. I started smelling something. I hear the fire go off. The alarm. So I ran downstairs and his door was shut. He was sleeping. So I, I ran back in the house as the fire was going. And I ran up to his room. I ripped him out of the bed. I said, come on, we got to go. The house is on fire. It took two hours for firefighters to get these flames under control. Nearly 30 people have been displaced. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. A wrongful death lawsuit filed by the family of the late singer Prince has been dismissed. The dismissal suggests family members may have reached settlements with defendants. That includes the Minnesota doctor who saw Prince in the weeks before his death and the Illinois hospital that treated him for an opioid overdose a week before he died. Prince was 57 when he died of an accidental fentanyl overdose back in 2016. No one was criminally charged in his death, and the source of the counterfeit pills that killed him remains unknown. The latest now in the case of the Boeing 737 MAX. Production is now officially on hold. Boeing confirms its Washington assembly line has stopped building this plane. The 737 MAX was grounded in March after two fatal crashes that killed a total of 346 people. The company continued to build the jets, though, and now has about 400 completed jets parked in Washington and here in Texas. Boeing hoped the plane would fly again before the end of 2019, but in December, the FAA's administrator said approval would not come until sometime in 2020. It's turning now to consumer news at six. Seven chemicals commonly found in sunscreens can be absorbed into the bloodstream at levels exceeding safety standards. That's just after one use. That's according to a study published by the Center for Drug Evaluation and Research, an arm of the FDA. 
But the center's director says just because an ingredient is absorbed doesn't mean it's not safe. Further industry testing is needed to determine the safety and effects of the ingredients, especially with regular regular use. According to a new study by anti-tobacco anti advocacy group, the Truth Initiative, Juul use actually increased last year. The study shows the use of this e-cigarette doubled among 15 to 34 year olds despite numerous danger warnings. And the percentage of people who tried Juul went up from 6% in 2018 to almost 14% in 2019. It is worth noting though that since the study's data was collected, Juul has removed flavored products from the U.S. market because of an increase in the number of underage people trying it out. In the most expensive in history. Plus, what exactly are we supposed to call Harry and Meghan now that they're ditching their royal titles? It seems Buckingham Palace is still trying to figure that out as well. We are coming to you from the KSAT News at 9 set here in the KSAT 12 newsroom to talk about what is coming up tonight at 9. And first thing we're going to explain tonight is flag etiquette. Yeah, there are things that you are supposed to and not supposed to do with the flag. There are a lot of stories out there over perceived disrespect of the flag. Tiffany Wertz is going to break down what is good flag etiquette. And actually, did you see the hidden video of the guy that, that saw the tattered flag yes. and disposed of well, it properly? Exactly. So she explains what you're supposed to do um, with the flag and also talks to a veteran about what this process, what these rules, what the flag means to him. Yeah. Okay. Let's go back to remember when the river walk was drained? And they found those ago. huge snails in there. They were not small. These were apple snails. And apparently yeah. they're an invasive species here in San Antonio. So RJ Marquez is going to talk about these creatures, what they are, why they're a problem along the river, and what biologists are trying to do about it. Now, am I correct that it's not the snails in particular? It's like what they produce or byproduct or what they spread or something like yes, that? Yes, something that is harmful to our native environment here. He'll talk about how they got here and the side effects of them being here. Yeah, and something that we do every week at 9 o'clock, money is personal. That's right. We are talking about tax tips. It is not too early to be thinking about taxes, filing them, the process, how to make it easier. That's something we all want to do. So our Ivan Herrera breaks down some tax tips tonight in our consumer series we call money it's personal all right let's go back to the studio and check in with adam kasky and i will be there with you on the nine o'clock to uh, join you with the latest on the rain that's moving into town right now we don't have any rain locally but just low clouds that are getting a bit thicker and as for temperatures you know right now we're right around 60 degrees and even 60 at the airport in san antonio and will gradually fall through the 50s this evening notice 2 a.m 51 at that point i am expecting some areas of rain to be moving into town and move through San Antonio. So at the bus stop tomorrow morning, it's going to be soggy. Have the umbrella or raincoat ready for the kids, even yourself, for the commute. Widespread rain, 50 degrees, and a light southerly breeze. We'll chat more about this rainfall, time it all out for you, and how much we could get coming up. All right, check this out. A new dinosaur. I got to get this name, I probably will not get it right. It is called Wulong Bohiensis or Dancing Dragon. I prefer Dancing Dragon. It's been <laughs> identified by researchers. Last week, those researchers published their discovery featuring the dino that lived about 120 million years ago. Its entire body was covered with feathers, complete with two plumes at the tail's end. Researchers have declared this feathered dinosaur demonstrates a crucial link between dinosaurs and birds. A lot of people don't realize dinosaurs, some, did have feathers. Yeah, there you go. A stolen car, which once belonged to actress Rita Hayworth, has been recovered. Police in Sacramento, California, say it's all thanks to Facebook, apparently. The classic car was stolen from its owner on Friday. The department posted photos and information about the very distinct car in an effort to try to track it down. The car is a 1956 Bermuda Blue Cadillac Eldorado, which actually has Rita Hayworth's name on it in several places was actually found in North Sacramento with several car show trophies inside. Police say the investigation into who stole it is still ongoing. The owner is a 106 year old former stuntman who says Hayworth gave him the car. I'm sure he's happy to have it back. That's all around a great story yeah. and a cool car.
Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's titles post-royal exit have sparked some confusion. Buckingham Palace says it's working to prepare revised guidance on how Prince Harry and his wife Meghan are now to be addressed. Yeah, the palace's clarification comes after guidance was issued stating that the royal couple would be known as Harry, Duke of Sussex, and Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, leading to reports that Meghan had been given the style, the style of a divorced woman. I don't know. Buckingham Palace says they clarified their previous guidance on the royal couple's title. That previous was wrong. There's a lot of royal rules There's, yeah. that we just don't yeah. uh, quite understand here. Yes. Ticket prices to Super Bowl 54 in Miami could be the most expensive ever. The matchup is set between the Kansas City Chiefs, the San Francisco 49ers. According to SeatGeek, the average resale ticket is currently going for more than $6,000. Wow, this will be the Chiefs' first trip to the Super Bowl since winning it all in the NFL, so I'm not surprised it's a hot ticket, but it should be a good game. I think a lot of hype because it's teams that we haven't seen. It's not the Patriots. Right, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's right. not the Patriots. I mean, that's, that's probably That's what big, I meant by teams we reason. haven't seen. Yeah. Everybody the outside of New England's <laughs> happy about this yeah. matchup, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so we have some rain that's going to be moving into town later on tonight. It's going to be a wet, soggy, and damp Wednesday. Good. It's a good thing because we're going to bookend it with sunshine, and we could use the rain. We need the moisture, and it looks like we'll get some around here. Not a big drought buster, but it'll put a little dent in the drought, just a little dig in it, and it'll help out a little bit, and boost the aquifer as well. So let's start with a look at radar. We're getting a few radar returns northwest of San Antonio. I do suspect some of this may be evaporating before it hits the ground, but not all of it. Southern Gillespie County seen some quick, fast moving showers at this hour, maybe leaving a trace to a few hundredths of an inch, but that's it. Otherwise, with the beam higher in the sky, you can see some of the thicker clouds rolling in from the northwest. All right, you see, we're just on the front end of this activity. A lot of rain West Texas all the way up into the panhandle. This is some good soaking rain for our friends all over the state, especially off to the north right now. And it's being driven by this upper disturbance that's got the energy out ahead of it and a good plume of moisture coming in up above us off the Pacific. And so our air right now and throughout the day has just been gradually saturating and basically priming itself for the raindrops. If we had any showers right now, I think it'd be Virga and would evaporate before it hits the ground. But as the temperature drops and moisture increases, oh yeah, we'll be able to su sustain those raindrops later on tonight. So let's look at our future cast. I like this model in particular. You know, 8, 9 p.m., more of the same. Just some low clouds out there. Temperatures in the 50s. But by midnight, and especially a little after midnight, we're expecting the rain to start to move into San Antonio, already overspreading the hill country. Through the morning commute, widespread areas of light to moderate rain. So give yourself a little extra time tomorrow morning. Umbrella raincoat for the kids at the bus stop. Even at the noon hour, kids, I think, you know, late morning, noon recess, it'll be indoors. It'll definitely be indoors. By the afternoon, we'll start to see the rain push eastward. Three, four o'clock should be far east of San Antonio. So I think the evening commute won't have any active rain, just left over moisture on the roadways uh, from the earlier showers. And then we return to sunshine on Thursday. So in terms of rainfall potential, lesser amounts closer to the border higher amounts basically locally and east of San Antonio, even up the I-35 corridor where you see this bright blue color could pick up maybe three quarters of an inch. That's a possibility even within parts of Bear County. Of course, it's all a matter of exactly where those more moderate showers set up and if some of them even follow each other. But the potential's there for maybe three quarters of an inch across parts of South Texas. So that's, that's promising. Temperature wise right now, Pleasanton's 59, but 54 in Kerrville. Gonzales 57 in Carrizo Springs at 63. Little temperature drop tonight. We'll be at around 50 in the morning. Bulk of the rain the first half of the day through the early afternoon. Then the rain tapering off by tomorrow afternoon and evening. Near 60 for the high temperature. Thursday, yeah, we'll probably have some morning fog, but otherwise a beautiful day. Bright sunshine. Highs right around 70 degrees and with the previous rain and now this soaker should really green things up nicely with that sun Thursday and Friday weekend, a slight chance of rain. We'll keep you updated on that situation and how it pans out. Temperatures very nice though, mm -hmm. not changing much, mostly yeah. in the 60s. Yeah, All right. Thank you. thanks Adam. In case you missed it up next. Here's today's in case you missed it. 
Yes, it is Tuesday, January 21st. A man arrested in connection with a murder will soon have his day in court. Jury selection set to begin in the trial. Henry Adame was arrested in February of last year. He was charged in connection with the death of 32-year-old Rudy Berlanga. According to arrest documents, Berlanga and Adame got into some sort of a confrontation. The man who was inside the home with his girlfriend told police that he heard the men yell and then he heard gunfire. The couple left their home and later returned to find the victim dead in the living room. Adame was booked on a first-degree felony charge of murder. And a man now facing charges after police say he attacked someone and took their phone on the northwest side. Robbie Cotty charged with aggravated robbery. Police say on Sunday they were called to investigate a robbery in the 400 block of Vance Jackson. They tell us that the victim was getting his things and trying to leave an apartment when he was accosted by the suspect. Police say that Cotty even hit the victim in the face with a gun, took the victim's cell phone, that victim able to get away and call 911. Iran has now acknowledged that its armed forces fired two Russian anti-aircraft missiles at that Ukrainian jetliner that crashed after taking off from Tehran's main airport. All 176 people on board were killed. And two female astronauts successfully carrying out NASA's third ever all-women spacewalk yesterday. The flight engineers completed the main task to upgrade the International Space Station's power systems. The spacewalk took just over five hours. The pair conducted the first ever all-female spacewalk all the way back in October. Tomorrow it's going to be a soggy day. Some good rainfall, nothing severe, nothing to worry about. Just uh, give yourself some extra time on the roads because they'll be slick. And then back to sunshine Thursday, comfortable temperatures. Thanks for watching the news at 6. See you back here at 10 and of course online at 9.